210-987-654-321. Sorry, everybody. Hey, testing, testing. Lots of testing. I can count yeah, some numbers. This is fucking hilarious. That was like... Sorry. That was... Hello and welcome to CNET special Pokemon Go show. My name's Mike Sorrentino. I am here with Sean and Caitlin, and we're here to hash out this new Pokemon Go update. And uh, guys, tell me a little bit about your Poke who your your names, your Pokemon Go experience, and then we'll go going from there. Oh, I'm going first. Sure. Oh. I think ladies first. Um, age before beauty. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Uh, I'm Sean, Sean Hollister. I read a lot about Pokemon Go now. It's the new beat here at CDET. And uh, here are some of my favorite Pokemon. My favorite right now is Tentacruel. It's always been one of my favorites because you get to say, release the Kraken every time you unleash it. And it's not powered up as much as I'd like because I don't seem to get any candy for it. I started playing Pokemon uh, with red and blue, and then I kind of stopped because after 151, I was like, well, if I can't catch them all because you keep introducing more, what's the point? <laughs> uh, I'm Caitlin. I never ever played Pokemon anything. My best friend at the time was obs I guess you're still my best friend, Michaela. Sorry, I was hopefully. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Not anymore. Michaela, in school, anymore. Michaela was mere obsessed with Pokemon. Sorry, I knew nothing about them. I didn't watch it. I didn't play the cards. I didn't nothing. But I am really enjoying Pokemon Go, and not just for the tech culture being involved aspect of it. Um, I don't know what my favorite is. I was kind of thinking about it. Although, to be fair, I really like renaming all of them. So I Ooh, I like this Porygon. guy. Oh, yeah. Love Porygon. I don't have one. Apparently, yet. he's ridiculous. I'm and so used jealous. to give people children seizures in Japan, which obviously just made him even more my favorite. Also, the one that I can't show you, I renamed her poorly. Because uh, it I also gives you seizures? Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> the one that um, is like boob head fire, which incidentally is what I named him. Magmar. Oh, That's okay. Magmar. Cool. Don't so ask me So obviously one of my most favorite parts of this game is renaming them into weird stuff. Yeah, my favorite, uh, my, so my favorite Psyduck in general, and I've renamed him, I don't know if it's coming out, Zen Fighter, because <laughs> even though he's a duck, he has a psychic move and a fighting move which is amazing considering he'll otherwise in the cartoon have a massive headache all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know what, what any of those I remember that. Mean. Yeah, Caitlin, apparently we, just before we started recording, <laughs> she admitted to us that she did not know the Pokemon theme song. Apparently she'd never watched the show, or and, and I should add, never listened to the song even once. No. Because if you listen to it even once, it you never get it out of your thing. head. Well, now I think I know all the words because I've heard it like five times in the last three minutes. But no, it was a contrarian thing. Because my best friend loved it, I was like, no, absolutely not. Don't come near me with those things. I don't want to hear about it. No. To be fair, it was my younger brother's thing more than my thing. And he liked to watch things over and over and over again to the point where I knew the entire plot of Toy Story by <laughs> heart and could recite every line of dialogue. Okay, well, so, that just seems useful. But not anymore. I lost oh, it. So okay. I can't. <laughs> but Pokemon theme song, I could sing the song. I'm not going to sing the song. So as we t get a hash out uh, this Pokemon Go update and any other Pokemon news you want to talk about, uh, we are live. So if you are with us in the YouTube chat, on live stream, or um, on our Facebook post about it, 
Uh, feel free to just chime in, and we will get to a few questions later on. Oh, we have a hashtag? We have a hashtag. We have a oh, hashtag, wonderful. CNET Live. So we're going to start monitoring that, too. Uh, tweet at us, CNET Live. Just, and uh, we'll monitor all these things and bring in as much as we can. Just to prove that we are live, and in fact, reading your comments, somebody named the Awesomeness Master 12 just talked about Mewtwo. Might be on a slight delay, but you'll see that comment shortly. <laughs> okay, so uh, over the weekend, uh, presumably Friday and Saturday, Pokemon yeah. Go changed up the game a little bit. Uh, uh, tell me a bit what you think uh, what, what, and what you've seen. We have some mixed feelings about this, Caitlin. And I don't I. think we have any mixed anything. Okay, we have a, a vigorous disagreement, Caitlin and I. I. I wrote an article that said Pokemon Go just changed battles for the better, and I Which, thought it was okay, amazing. Maybe they did is the thing. I don't think we have a mi as mixed, or I don't think we have as separate disparate point of views on this update as you think we do. Like, okay, maybe they did, but I'm a casual player. Okay. I don't... Even though my local bar is a poke gym, I don't go and just battle and take over it or even really train my Pokemon just because that's not what's fun to me. It's true. I feel like a lot of people don't battle because it's so hard, but this update is about making that easier. So what happened for you folks, just in case you didn't know, is they changed up the entire battle system, changing the moves of every single Pokemon. Before the update came out on Friday, Basically, how you had to win in a battle was you had to have a really, really strong Pokemon, one of the very few in the game, like a Snorlax or a Lapras or a Vaporeon, and you had to tap, 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 tap on the screen incessantly, spamming your quick attack in order to take down an enemy gym and retain it for any period of time. What they did is they changed it up so now that the charge moves, the more powerful moves, the ones you'd expect to do lots of damage, like a giant water beam or a solar ray and things like that, they actually do realistic amounts of damage now. You can actually use them instead of just spamming your quick attack and I thought that was great that they balanced these Pokemon and made it so it wasn't just a few on top of the gyms now maybe Caitlyn could actually attack a gym and win I don't know I mean I'm only so I'm a level 14 never mind me too and yeah I was and wrong. I don't I don't think I have anything that's really strong I think I have a little pinchy pinchy thing it looks like a cockroach meets a crab oh, standing pincer? on its hide legs. Pincer. It's got to be a pincer. Sure. I'm going to go with Mr. Pinchy thing. <laughs> and I think he's just under like 600 CP. But, okay, here's the thing. I'm a casual player slash hoarder. I go out and I enjoy catching these little furry purple things. But I don't really battle. And then I just kind of hoard them. Like, I will transfer any silly, stupid Zubats or purple rats or little pigeon things that I see that are under 100 CP. Because I'm like, no, I know that's nothing. Like, I don't need that. But I have, I don't know, almost like 300 Zubat candies, and I haven't evolved any of them. And I still have two lucky eggs, my two lucky eggs that I've gotten from leveling up and things. And I haven't used any of my lures. I think I have, what, three of them? Okay, I mean, it's, it's fair. <laughs> the, the, the Pokemon is about catching them all. I mean, gotta catch them all right, that's is all the tagline. So if that's all you want to do, I, I kind of, I'm kind of into that. And so that's why this update is really controversial, because it didn't just fix the battles. It also removed the ability to track down wild Pokemon. Now, this is where we get differ a little bit. So originally in the game, there was a system of footsteps where you could see nearby Pokemon. There was a screen in the game where you could see nearby Pokemon that I'm going to show you in a second. And it would have a number of footprints on this screen to show you how close they were to you. One footprint is really close. Three put footprints is pretty far away. So you could walk around and play warmer, colder till you actually found one of these wild Pokemon. And they got rid of that. Now there are no more footprints as of this update. Well, I mean, theoretically, it never worked anyway, right? It wasn't working anyway, but you told me, Caitlin, you said it was working for you. In the very beginning, before they made, like, a quick bug release update, I actually saw one, two, and three footprints, depending on where I walked or where I moved or, like, when I would leave my apartment. I'm in between, like, two and a half Pokestops. So when I would leave my apartment and go to... The bar or go to the restaurant or something in my neighborhood I would actually see changing footprints and changing Pokemon it also theoretically let, theoretically let you target a Pokemon by tapping on it then it appeared in the corner of your screen with the footprints and you could see how you were progressing toward or away from it yeah right right but you can't do that anymore maybe you never could I know I never caught a single wild Pokemon by targeting it by chasing the footprints it was always buggy for me never worked 
And then on top of that, though, there was another way you could find these Pokemon. The developers of the of of uh, some folks on in the in Pokemon Go community who are software developers, they said, "Hey, we can build our own apps to track these Pokemon using the same APIs from the game, using the same data that." trickles into your phone to tell you where the Pokemon are. They went and they've created their own apps, like PokeVision on the web, where you can just get a map of the area and see where the Pokemon spawn, find them, and, and go there. So, you know, the other day, in our office, a Dragon Knight appeared right Wait, at the really? corner of our... Yes. You wow. weren't here for this? No. Uh, no that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's, no, it was last Wednesday. Michael's in from New York. I'm okay. Visiting. So in San Francisco, the corner of our office... There was a rush on CNET headquarters. We saw people running down the street to catch this dragon out of the quarter of our offices because they found it on these online maps. They had no idea where to go just by looking at their Pokemon Go app, but by going to PokeVision, by going to PokeHound, by going to these PokeRadar apps, they knew if they walked several blocks down to our headquarters, they could catch this elusive rare Pokemon. And so they did. But now... Ah, it was so upsetting, though, to get... Bonnie coming into our meeting and being like, guys, there's a there's a Dragonite outside the office. Go, go. This is breaking. And all Dudes, productivity go. ends. She oh, was our, she's our video we producer. She's just like, we got to get this our computers. Filled. We left our papers. We just beelined out of here and missed it. But now nobody's going to be able to do that because Niantic is cracking down on these third-party Pokemon tracking apps as well. Which is so upsetting. It's like Niantic was like, hey, guess what? We're going to cut off, you know, that really useful thing that you use. Oh, and by the way, we're also going to turn off our own tracking. So good luck. Have fun catching them. There might be figuring a, out where they are. There might be a safety issue with that in a way, though, too, because maybe people who were like, when people were getting robbed by going after lures, maybe there were people taking advantage of the fact that, oh, there's a Dragonite. There's going to be people going. Let's haunt that area. So maybe they're trying to turn off some of the... Okay, first of all, if somebody is going to mug you, they're not going to mug you when there are 30 people in a crowd. There you, there you will get pickpocketed. Watch out for that instead. <laughs> Second of all, if you are looking at a map and using lures to determine who to go mug, get a better system, okay? That's illogical. First of all, most lures are from people who are either in a building or near a place of business like I said, a lot of mine in my neighborhood are either in restaurants or bars, which is great if I go have dinner or have a drink or something. But, like, guys, be smart. Seriously, like, <laughs> you can still see on your map anything near you that has a lure. That's yeah, true. So, Those are the same sort of I don't of know idea. what they're really, yeah. I that don't know what they're changed. really cracking down on here. That's still important. And they've been at, they, that was one of the other additions was a lot more warning messages. I think one, the one of the ones I saw when I was riding in a, a Lyft ride was uh, uh, don't play while driving. And I was a passenger, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I think another was there were like a few times in it, watch where you're going. I mean, they always had the Gyarados in the front saying, watch where you're going. But I think in the middle of it now, there's also a few extra uh, pay attention. So, I mean, I think that I, I want to defend, I want to step out here and, and defend Niantic for a sec and say, maybe they're just doing this because of the immense server load. Mm -hmm. Like both... People trying to use the nearby feature to find those footsteps and track down the Pokemon, and also people using these PokeVision apps. Every time somebody uses one of those things, one of these automated tools that pings the server over and over again to figure out where the Pokemon are, every time they do that, they're putting an additional strain on the servers, which are already trying to deal with this massive, massive load of all these players that they did not expect. I mean, this game, they say it's making maybe $10 million a day from in-app purchases. Previous games that Niantic has made, they, they were tiny. They didn't have anywhere Niantic near Niantic is the acting like an uh, angry parent. They're acting like a parent who is like, don't do this or I'm going to take away your toys. And then they just put you on, like, technological restriction or something. Like, what? you just going to ground me? You think that that's how you want people to play your game? You're going to take away anything useful that we were using to play your game? Like, it's one thing to take away the steps. That would have been fine because we all know it's been a bug and it hasn't been working since inception. But then, to also cut off access for PokeVision and Radar and all the things that were actually making it fun to catch Pokemon... That's ridiculous. That is so 
backward of Niantic. But how do we know they're not just going to reinstate it in an update as soon as they figure out the server? Has there been anything to make that even seem like a remote possibility? Well, to be fair, they don't communicate. They don't say anything. We had no idea this was coming late on a Friday. They were going to change the game out from under us. So maybe that's why people are so angry, because we just don't know. They don't tell us anything at all. Neither do a lot of, I don't know. Okay. I don't think it's just the fact that they didn't tell us anything, quote unquote. I think for me, it's the fact that they cut off any way for a casual player to enjoy the game. So you were only enjoying the game by searching for Pokemon that you could find through the tracking and PokeVision and all that? Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. They're near my house. Like, let me go grab that. Let me go get this cool blue head okay, fireman. So, so now we're talking like, about the difference between going out to play the game and playing the game whenever you're out. When playing so, it as a collector. I play it whenever I'm out. I, mean, I play I'm it whenever out I'm out. And about, I play the game. I don't need to like something to ping me and tell me. No, oh, but a if Pokemon. I'm on PokeVision or I'm at home being like, oh, maybe I'll go get a drink. Maybe I'll go get dinner. Where should I go? And I look on PokeVision, which admittedly I'm probably more angry about this than most people because I only started doing this on Thursday night, Friday morning. <laughs> then I'm going to be like, cool, I'll go to Monk's Kettle for my beer because there's a boob head fireman nearby. Like, I, oh, it's so I mean, so I, just go, I just go where the Pokestops are. I mean, if I, I'll, I'll say, hey, there's this restaurant. It's got two Pokestops nearby, maybe three. I'll put a lure on one of them. I'll just sit there and sip my coffee and, you know, cut up my steak or whatever the heck I can afford to eat this week. And uh, and, and I'll, I'll constantly get Pokeballs and catch some Pokemon while I'm there. It doesn't need to be a Magmar or a Booby Firehead Man. Oh, is that his name? <laughs> is, Sorry. Is that what you said? I don't, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, Boobhead Fireman. Oh, Boobhead Fireman. There we I go. Didn't, pff, doesn't need to be names. a Transformer Porygon. I don't need yeah, to the Transformers is probably one of my it's favorites. It's great. I caught that it's one on great. accident. <laughs> so definitely those services, were they um, outside of Niantic's uh, terms of service? And do you think Niantic would create a first party version of it to be like, if you want to catch... Let's say Articuno go to somewhere really, really cold. If they don't want any ill will, they'll create their own. Yeah. And quickly. I mean, to be honest, I think it's kind of a cash grab for them to some degree. They really want to sell people on this wander around and find things you didn't expect. They don't want to be on the go to specific locations and catch the rare Pokemon easily kind of thing because they want to keep people playing as long as possible. Why do you just keep playing after you've caught them all? Are you going to keep playing after you've caught them all? Probably Caitlin? because they've already said they'll release like new ones. Okay, but but soon in September, well originally it was supposed to be coming on July, but September, they're going to have this wearable. Nintendo's going to have this wearable they're going to sell for $35. It's a little pin or wristband you put on your wrist that lets you see Pokemon nearby you and you can just press a button to catch them. And they want to sell those devices. I mean, they don't want people to already just know where the Pokemon are go straight there. They want people to wander around and magically stumble upon them. Hi, I'm a woman who lives in an urban area. I ain't going to be doing no wandering around by myself. I don't care what Pokemon's nearby. Fair. Just saying. <laughs> What, what I could have made got? it a lot more fun. So the, like... style the, so the style of the app changed a little bit, too. I noticed that when I was catching some Pokemon last night, it seemed like there was a couple actually graphical improvements to the, to the, way, the, balls, the way the ball threw and landed. Um, what if, and then uh, I think we were talking about font, possibly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's some memes, uh, the some nasty memes going on. It's the stupidest thing for me Sorry. to be angry about, but yeah, I hate there's a stops all of their new font changes. Okay, like, really, Niantic? We gave you a list of things we wanted from you, and you came to us and said, look what we changed, the font. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we also now have the ability to customize our human again. To be fair, you were you were kind of interested in that, right? You Don't get me to... wrong, I already did it. Like I, already, okay. I totally already like changed your clothes, but I figured. dude, come on. Hey, you, you can do a sex change in Pokemon Go now, too. All Super right. important. I do need to go in and like just rechange the entire outfit, and um, I'm kind of wondering. I know everybody hates, a bunch of people hate Tim Instinct's new leader's clothing options, but I kind of want his hoodie on my character. I'm just saying. Uh, but although the, the the jackets that the other two leaders, Wh have, which color is Tim Instinct again? Yellow. Is that yellow. 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 And I might. Be I don't. I don't one. think we can be friends. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> it's a very polarizing decision. To Wait, have what made. are you? What team are you, Sean? Mystic. 
I don't know what team I'm on. Is that blue? Blue. blue right? Oh, I'm on blue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, everybody loves the blue it's team. Blue. For it's all about reason. blue. They also have taken over every gym, so I'm already like, I'm already outcast. From you know, people were complaining. I've seen a lot of complaining. I don't know. People have been complaining. Oh, wait, hey, hold on. I got to get There's this There's always a lot thing. of complaining. What also, is this I'm also catching the Pokemon right now. What is it? It's a Pidgey. Pidgey's what? my favorite Pokemon because every time you catch four of them, you get at least 900 experience points. 100 for each Pokemon you catch, 500 for the Evolve, if, unless you double it with a lucky egg. It's the best Pokemon. To be, oh, to be clear, even though we're hashing out everything in the game, Pokemon. obviously we enjoy the game because we're still pl- we're playing, playing, playing it right, it now. right now. What'd you just catch, Caitlin? I don't know. A okay. little caterpillar thing? No, no. Oh, it's a Weedle. With the, it's oh, a Weedle. Okay. All right. <laughs> We have any good questions from the audience yet, or uh, we have um, a lot of comments uh, live. And uh, let me jump down to our questions. So Godfrey asks, "How can you find Pokemon now that the Raider system is broken?" And Pokemon. So we talked about this a bit earlier, <laughs> but what would you, what would you good prefer luck. the best way to go about it? There are still a few trackers out there that work. If you go to uh, Reddit, you go to r slash Pokemon Go Dev. There's a bunch of software developers working on the game, working on these apps, and they're talking about ways to get around the blocks. And they are talking about a few of these tracking apps that do still work. Because what Pokemon, it seems like what Niantic did is they um, they shut down the IP addresses of commonly used cloud services like Amazon Web Hosting, which were powering these third-party apps to begin with. So it's like, okay, the most popular ones, we'll shut them all down just by blocking Amazon because Amazon's got the servers. But then some of the ones who were hosting them on their own servers, they haven't been blocked yet, is what my understanding anyhow. Mm. Brandon, in our YouTube chat, has a more general questions I do want to post to you both. Why do people like this game so much? Pokemon's been a game for over a decade, and that is really clear. Pokemon has been around for 16 years now, a little over that in Japan. And, uh, but now it's like 1999 all over again. Pokemon everywhere, dominating the news cycle. You can get drinks Whoa, for dropping Whoa, is that when lure. that came out? Uh, if I remember right. Dang, I was way older than I thought I was. And I think yeah. 90, <laughs> 98 in Japan, if I'm, or 97 even. I think, uh, I think 98 is when the U.S. TV show started airing, 98. I'm going to look that In up. In any case, but for me, think? the reason why I like it is because the AR part of it is actually really entertaining to me. I think it's kind of it was kind of fun in the beginning for me to like be catching things while I was in bed and be like, look who visited me. Ah, it's so funny. Um, there was the little skull and crossbones guy. I caught him one day when I was like vegging out on Netflix. Nailed it. There's a lot of nostalgia <laughs> for me, but also this... I've been wanting a game that just really gamifies exercise for me, something that'll get me out of the house, walking around, losing some weight. And this one does it because the feedback loop is just so quick and so consistent. I know every time I walk out there, I'll get some more Pokeballs. I'll find a Pokemon. Soon I'll have gained enough to evolve them and get some more experience points, get to the next level. I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm already at level 22, and I feel like the game's wearing a little bit thin. But... I don't know. It's it's just that quick jolt of electricity that I didn't get from exercise by itself. Our chat has, after we began talking about that, a bunch of guesses as to year and age. Uh, my search said 1996 for the original release of Pokemon Red and Green in Japan. That sounds right. That sounds right. So that seems closer to when I thought it was. So it's um. So shifting away a bit from the app updates, uh, let's go over a bit about just some advanced Pokemon techniques. So let's say you want to go beyond collecting and you want to take on gyms easily. What are some of the best ways to actually power up the team? Because the game plays a lot different than it did on Game Boy and DS, where you caught a Pokemon, you raised it, you got maybe trained it with some machines. Uh, in this case, it's more like almost like trading cards. Yeah, it's. I mean, you still uh, train it, right? You have to train it at a gym. You don't. You don't train the Pokemon, though. I mean, you're just training up your own level, and you're making the gym levels higher. To be honest, this game is. It doesn't a lot affect like... my little monsters at all. No. Oh, that seems weird. No, it's really weird. It's more like you're. Yet another reason why I don't them. go to gym. It's kind of like. It's kind of like, you remember when the Americans in the Wild West they hunted down all the <laughs> buffalo, and this just is and just going killed them all. And took their skin and their skulls and they piled up the skulls into big piles. It's kind of like that because your objective here is to catch as many as possible. And then you need to turn them into candy. In order to power up your Pokemon, you have to turn these Pokemon into candy. So you take them to the professor and you transfer them. You transfer them. And it doesn't exactly describe what happens when you transfer them, but you put in a Pokemon and out comes a piece of 
Pokemon candy. I think he grinds them up. <laughs> and then and then you feed that candy to the the other Pokemon of the same type. So it's it's definitely got this auto cannibalism thing going on here. Um, and then and then after you've powered them up to a certain degree, you can evolve them, or you can evolve them and then power them up, and they become a larger, you know, monsterish, you know, much more powerful version of the same Pokemon. Well, but sure, then you need a lot more candy to do that. Relatives. They've but, basically taken on every single power that their relatives had and ate them in the form of candy. But the weird thing is you can't, if you find the big, powerful Pokemon in the wild, you trade them in for the same amount of candy as the small, little, weak ones. So it's kind of like you're, you're, th you're, you're thinning out the herd by killing all the weak buffalo off. Darwinism, man. Yeah, in a way, if you Rival have... Rival of the fittest, if bro. You, if you have a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto in the same Pokestop, you're better off just getting the Pidgey and using Much less better. Pokeballs. It's easier to catch the Pidgey, you get the same amount of candy and experience for it, and when you get that Pidgey into your inventory, it's easier to evolve the Pidgey, because it only takes, you know, 12 candies to evolve a Pidgey, whereas it takes 25 or 50, excuse me, 50, I think, to turn a Pidgeotto into a Pidgeot. So it's, you're better off just thinning out the weak parts of the herd. Uh, the other night, my... It's a little grim. I, I just had, <laughs> I had a, a bunch of Pokemon ready to evolve, and I dropped uh, one of the lucky eggs and just hit evolve in all of them. Because I guess then you get double XP. Yeah. And it was sort of weird, because I was like, I'm growing all these Pokemon, but I have no intention of keeping eight of them. And they're all getting transferred after they're being evolved. Yeah, I know. that The fastest way to level up in the game is to just... Get rid, sever your emotional connection to any of these little monsters. But I've named them. Crack a lucky but egg. But I love some of them, like Lil' Kim. Evolve them and cut them off. And then, Evolve them and grind them up. And carry Evolve the them and grind them up. And carry the nickname to the new Pokemon that you're actually keeping for as long as you want. And the reason them. you do this, the reason you do this is because you're trying to boost your own trainer level. All, all, every time you evolve one of these Pokemon, you get 500 experience points. You get 1,000 if you crack the Lucky Egg, because Lucky Egg doubles all your experience points. So, but the Lucky Egg only lasts 30 minutes. So in that interval, you need, to you need to evolve and grind down as many Pokemon as possible to boost your trainer level. And the reason you do that is, as your trainer level goes up, you automatically find stronger and stronger Pokemon. So that's the best way to advance the game, is just to do that. It's... But here's my question. At what point do I really need to level up to like find some of the higher level Pokemon that I want? Like, do you think that I, I won't even see some of them until I'm like level 20 or something like that? That's a good question. I mean, the more you can, can definitely go with you. You can find you can find any Pokemon, I think, just by looking around for them. Some see, of them will be really here weak. at CNET, a lot of the Pokemon Go people are levels 20 or above. So even though I'm just a 14, I just tag along with you guys and you go out for like walks and lunch and stuff, snatch up those 600 CP things because I'm a decent thrower, I guess. And I, it doesn't take me like 10, it takes me like... That is a really good way to game the system that you found in that yeah. case, if you go in groups. I've heard reports of if people go in groups, they just get better Pokemon in general, and that's probably a big yeah. reason why. That's I how I got my more. largest CP one was actually I went on a Pokewalk with Sean and Justin and Rebecca, and there was like a 600 or five something or 600 pincher man, and I was like, ooh, never seen one that high. Justin Justin is an insanely high level. I think he's like 26 now, 25, 27, 26, yeah. somewhere in there. Sean I mean, this morning it was 25, so by now he might be 27. Sean in our chat has an interesting uh, comment I want to throw in on this topic. He says that uh, playing the game from the perspective of a breeder is much more interesting for me, judging my mon based on individual value, which can be found using, using Poco, Poco Advisor, which we were saying probably doesn't work anymore. But It, it does for looking at the IV, the individual Poco value. Poco Advisor works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're not talking about maps anymore. We're talking about an application you can put on your phone, which lets you see the secret values of all your Pokemon. Because it has a desktop, too. I think I was looking yeah. at my computer. Okay. I think there's a desktop version, too. You just log in. Uh, that looks like it, yes. Oh, that is it. not the one I was using. But that's there the one is, I've been using. There, is, um, there are a few. There are a few that like calculate based on what the... The CP, the yeah, hit it's points, it's it's HP? weird because like CP is like a, kind of a generalized. We think your Pokemon is this powerful, 
and then that combined with your move set the, the and the damage of those moves determine you know how much damage you're going to do the the enemy Pokemon. But they're actually all based on some secret values, individual values that have been um, a staple of the Pokemon series. Each Pokemon has an attack number, a defense number, and a. Do you remember what the third number is by any chance? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, there's a, there's <laughs> a third value, stamina or something that determines the health hit points. And so the folks online, when they were analyzing the game's data, they figured out how to reverse engineer that formula. So you stick your HP value, your CP value, and the current amount of stardust it'll take to evolve your Pokemon into a spreadsheet or into a calculator, and it'll tell you what those secret values are. And that lets you know the maximum potential of your Pokemon as determined at birth, basically. So if you find a good Bulbasaur or a good, you know, Squirtle in the wild, even if it's really low CP, it might have just 15, 20 CP, something like that, you could evolve it to be a much stronger Squirtle than almost any other one in the game if it has those high secret individual values. And Poke Advisors is one of these apps that'll automatically show you the values for all your Pokemon. So you can say, okay, I'm not going to trade this Squirtle in, even though it seems to have low CP, because it's actually going to be a better Pokemon in the end. Okay, so what you're telling me is that this egg dude, who I oh, obviously Chansey. named I find that Aegon from Game of Thrones, <laughs> is potentially better than I think he is? Potentially. Because he looks like he's going to do nothing. I mean, we could, sit we could on calculate someone. it. Let me, let me find the spreadsheet. We'll calculate it while we continue. And I believe it looks all, like he's just going to sit on someone. And all the Pokemon, okay. I believe, they grow as you grow up in level, or at least they can get, get to a higher CP over time. Hey, real quick, someone in our chat room, live stream chat room, pointed out Pokey Advisor or PokeyAssistant.com. Mm -hmm. Assistant. That's another yeah. one, yeah. Oh. That's actually where I am right now. So what's the name of that Pokemon? That's uh, it's a Chansey. Sure. Mm -hmm. And what's the CP? 27. 27. And then what's the, oh, I'm looking at the wrong calculator. I want the IV calculator. Okay, so a Chansey with 27. What's the HP? 85. 27. HP of 85. How much dust will it cost to evolve? Two, or you can't up, evolve. You can power up. him up for 200. 200. And one candy. Okay, let's find the IVs. So that Pokemon could be 90, as much as 91% perfect and is at least 61% perfect. So at least 62%. Means so you're definitely so an average. Yeah. You would not be wasting points by evolving this Pokemon. And maybe, maybe it's as much as 91%. It could be a nearly perfect Pokemon. You evolve it, and it's gonna, it could be fantastic in the end. But you don't know unless you do a little more calculation. So, If you powered well, it up right now, Well, now I think he's much it. cuter than I originally did. Even though he's shaped like an egg, with an egg in his pouch. That's just weird. You Can guys. you power it up once? Mm. I'm a hoarder. This is very hard for me. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to... I'm going to show you my story. Okay, he went up to a CP 36. 36. And a HP 99. 99. Ooh, that sounds and great. dust is still 200? Yeah. Okay, so that is... Pressing the button now. Let's see what we got. Uh, there's still lots of combinations, but it's at least 69%, maybe 89% perfect. Okay, so he, he sure got a little smaller. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I guess that's I a B plus, that, but... A minus. Like, I guess that's fine. So there's, there's a lot of math that could still be done. <laughs> a lot of math, because they don't share these values. But that Poka Advisor, if you plug your values in there, uh, I mean, if you, if you give it your account, basically, it will automatically tell you how good your Pokemon are. It's just, you know, the whole giving it your account thing. So. I don't think I want to know all that. Yeah, I don't think I need to know that much. Like, I want to know what my favorites are and how they will do. It's probably the next That's thing Niantic is going to crack down on, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, they're probably so going to What you're saying is I should people. do that now. Or maybe they'll trace it back and they'll ban you retroactively. No, I wouldn't give them my things. I would, like, try it. I would, like, oh, put in my numbers. fair. Fair. Yeah. No, I don't want to give anyone my account numbers. What do you, what do you think? I'm crazy? Come on. So the last topic I think we're going to wrap up on, uh, a couple of people put in our chats uh, features they'd want to see in the future. Uh, Hurston said he hopes he can have trainer battles. Shabazz, if I said his name right, uh, or her, his or her name right, asks if we will ever be able to change our teams. Is there a feature, a dream feature you want going forward that we don't have currently in this mobile game? I mean, it's not a feature. That's kind of a feature. So what I really, really, really want for Pokemon Go is I want a carpool mode. I want a mode, you turn it on, and you say, I'm in the passenger seat of the car, or I'm in the driver's seat of a car playing this game. 
I'm handing Whoa, my phone no to a friend. No driving while playing Pokemon. The point is, you, you hand your phone to a friend, <laughs> and you get Stardust or something like that for being a responsible person and not playing. So this is something where you press the button, and it basically disables all the features of Pokemon Go, just keeps your phone on, you hand it to a friend, and you get some Stardust for being the designated driver in the car and not playing the damn mm. game. Because the game right now, you can play it while driving, it is extremely dangerous, and there's nothing to stop it. I mean, in, in a previous game Niantic made, uh, Ingress, there was like a speed limit where if you went past a certain speed, you know, you, you, it, would, it would disable some of the game's features. But right now, I can be going 80 down the highway, and if I see a Pikachu in the other lane, I can tap on it, and I can try to catch it. And it's kind of crazy that it lets me do that. It just doesn't count your steps, right? Your It doesn't count your steps distance if you travel. do over certain speeds, if you do things that aren't... There, there's all kinds of... Folks on Reddit trying to figure out exactly how egg counting steps works, but uh, we do know that over certain speeds it doesn't work. But also, even with ingress, even with the speed limit, people would be, okay, well, I can't drive over 15 miles an hour. I guess I'll drive at 15 miles an hour around this place and, and catch my you know Pokemon or hack my portals in ingress. And it's just dangerous, and they don't need to, it doesn't need to be dangerous. Just incentivize playing responsibly. Incentivize not playing while as the driver of a car. Don't That's a good and, one. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Do not Pokemon Go and drive. That's correct. Do not Pokemon Go and drive. Kaylin, what's your uh, dream feature? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really thought that much about it. Mm. It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I guess I just miss the tracking. So anything that brings me some mm-hmm. semblance of that back would be spectacular. I guess... Mm-hmm. For me, the reason why I enjoyed using those things was because, you know, I'm not such, I I don't know, I'm a casual player. So it wasn't like I was being like, oh, look, there's a nest of XYZ over there. Mm -hmm. But like, guys, I really want Pikachu. If I could like find a thing that showed me where he was, I want him. I want certain ones. I wish I knew uh, the creatures that I could only find in different areas since, like, I was at uh, San Diego Comic-Con recently and there was all kinds of fire Pokemon I could never find in New York. Up here, you guys are the land of Zubat. I have seen more Zubat in San Francisco than I have seen in anywhere else so far, um, even in New York, which has plenty of Zubat there, too. Um, but there's probably something. Maybe there's a, a seal that I could find more often here. or If you're in L.A., go to the La Brea Tar Pits. They have exactly the Pokemon you would expect to find there. <laughs> Let me pull Aww. up this other one, too. This what is, is great. it? I couldn't see it. Oh, I'll show it to you in just a sec, too. So uh, just take a look at this. Grimer. <laughs> this is exactly what you would expect to find. Exactly what you'd expect Ooh. to find hey, at the Hey, what about tarpets. that one that everyone's like, where is it? How do I find it? Ditto. Which, ditto. Oh, God. Nobody knows. Nobody's caught a ditto, I don't think. Uh... Is he part of the 151 or whatever? Ditto's part of the 151. And did the guy who said he caught all of them have a ditto? No. Mm. No. When he said all, he meant 146. Oh. Because there's no Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, no uh, ditto, no Mew or Mewtwo yet. Those ones haven't been found by anybody. And there's geographic specific ones, right? Like yeah. North America has a Tauros. Tauros or North America, there's... That's a three-tailed bull. See, I learned stuff. Ah. As dumb as I look. Nice. Uh, there's Kangaskhan, I think. Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. Like a kangaroo Pokemon. I think that's Australia. I don't know. That's awesome. Maybe being racist by saying that. <laughs> Elitist, countryist. I have no idea. Nationality. That's cool. I know that there are some, so... Uh, yeah, there's a I think one. that's really interesting. Hey, if you travel a lot, have fun. Yeah. They're not always where you'd expect to find them, though. I went to no, Carpinteria, at California. It's a beach town, and I found nothing but electric Pokemon. <laughs> there were like Voltorbs and Electrodes up the wazoo and Magnemites and Magnetons. And, I think in that respect, it's yeah. a little easier for casual players like me because I have no preconceived notions about where they're going to be living. Like, I'm like, oh, look, something out in the wild. Let me catch it. And I'm not like, why is it here along these power lines? This, But it's like you actually go into the wild and you find no Pokemon. Because they're only True. where people live. True. It's, well, it's sort weird. of. I went to, um, I played, so- I play soccer after work and I went to that park and that's where I found Boophead Fireman. Like he just spawned in the park randomly. But like a, a public huge, park where people huge go. Huge public park. Yeah, where people go. But there were no stops you around. Like... It was just Pokemon. There were no stops. That's fair. But it was weird. People go. I thought it was weird. I mean, if you go to a place where people don't go, even like I, I went to some 
back streets, you know, where there weren't a lot of people milling about. It was just drivers and houses, you know, uh, and there was just nothing in that suburban area. I had huh. to go more urban where there were people. See, this park was in a suburban area. That's why I thought it was. I may. Parks, there's an exception for parks. For parks that are known parks on Google Maps, they actually change the type of terrain. You can see that it's like this dark green veldt, and there'll be Pokemon there usually. Huh. I'm just glad we don't have to get into the tall grass. Like, to be, if they would be truthful to the game, is if you had to jump into like a large meadow of grass up to your yeah, waist to I mean, find Pokemon. If I'm at the top of, I don't know, some mountain around here, I want to find like mountain Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get up there and find no Pokemon. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen right now. <laughs> That's I haven't true. tried it yet, but you know. I was on a, a boat last week, and not I'm one on Pokemon appeared. I was thinking that the whole time too. Uh, that whole song. Good. Um, not one Pokemon found me in the in the water in wow. the bay outside San Diego. Well, Which Mike, is funny. I think you're supposed to find them. They don't yeah. find you. <laughs> <laughs> but my eggs hatched. All of my eggs hatched because we were traveling under 20 miles per hour. So I just left them incubate, and they all were done by the time I was off the boat. Nice. A Magikarp did jump into my car while I was driving. <laughs> This There's no true. water nearby. So nope. They're just going to flutter in. I find that since the update, I get this GPS signal not found way more often. Hmm. Yeah. Me. Yeah, me too. I don't know what's going on Which there. Which is frustrating because then it freezes and you can't tap your Pokestop or show where you are. It just kind of locks you out. Which I guess is good because when it used to say that, it would let me tap on the things that it I was, wasn't <laughs> actually near but I could tap on. Magikarp. On the highway. <laughs> yep, it happened. Don't Pokemon go and drive. I was in the passenger seat, you can tell. I know, it's just my disclaimer, you know. <laughs> just making sure everyone's, like, being safe. All right, Caitlin, Sean, thank you so much for joining us to, uh, uh, all of us today. Thank you, everyone, live for being here. Hope you all had fun. Thanks. Totally. Our, our fabulous engineer, Stephen Beecham, has helped us out this whole show, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, keep catching them all. And uh, maybe join us next time. Keep keep tuned to CNET for more Pokemon Go news. All day, every day. Uh, that's so true. <laughs> I told you, I've already learned the words. Oh, you're my best friend. I'm going to stop there. See, Caitlin can actually sing. No, that's She just doesn't know this song. Pokemon. Steven, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys so much. Live. Oh, we are? Oh, yeah. Oh, so thank you for joining us. Down. Yes, thanks. Hanging out yeah. with us. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we really appreciated your comments and jumping in throughout the show. I'm going to shut music. it down. Oh, and we were playing Pokemon the entire time. It yeah. was like Weedles, <laughs> rats, birds. There's nothing around anymore. Well, we got, we're on top of a Pokestop, though, so we can just keep spinning That's that every true. five I minutes. I do keep spinning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I missed a couple. Up. Yeah, got some great balls, some revives. I've had to empty out my backpack because I have more potions than, I'm, than gyms I could actually challenge. I don't even go to gyms, so I just empty all my just potions. Empty, if you don't play at gyms, empty <laughs> out all your potions, all your revives. Don't you don't need any of that. Care. Uh, imaginary, I'm sorry that we missed your question. I'm just seeing that in your comments. 